Woohoo! We have a fish! This might be why I was halfway down the beach. We have. Doggy, doggy, doggy. And a dab, dab, dab. Look, a completely different looking bait. That's a sign of some action on there. Probably a flatty having a suck on that worm. Hi everybody. Welcome to the Clickbait Gem YouTube channel. Today, you are joining me for a session fishing at Seaford, uh, which is fairly local to me. It's a beach I used to fish really often, but the last couple of years, I haven't been down here quite so much because the fishing hasn't been as great as it used to be, in my opinion. But today, the plan is to come down here, see if we can winkle out a place, even though the sea is a little bit choppy, a little bit may rotty, and see what we can do. I've only got frozen bait with me, which we'll take a look at shortly. And I've got a few different rig choices to try and we'll see how we get on. But if you do like watching the videos on this channel, please consider subscribing. It'll help me out a lot. I'll really appreciate it. And it's free to you. It helps me. And you'll see when new videos get posted in your subscriptions feed, uh, when you open up the YouTube app or go onto the YouTube website, however you watch it. Anyway, Today we're going to fish hard for a few hours, it's just going to be a short session and we'll see how we get on. So let's take a look at the frozen bait. It's all in my little bait pack. I don't need a lot of bait today because I'm only here for a few hours, maybe, maybe four at the most. But what do we have? I have 20 frozen lug uh, with a few other bits of frozen lug that I just had lurking in my freezer that weren't backpacked. So I brought those down to get them used up. And in this packet, there's about five frozen tiny peelers in there that were left over from my last session. That's all I've got, nothing fresh, not a lot of variety, but I'm out here giving it a go, just seeing if I can find anything that's out and about. So let's take a look at my first rig choice today. It's somewhere down here on the beach, here we go. This is a loop rig, and I've got 16 inch snoods on here. And my top hook there, I'll come a bit closer. We've got the usual SRT spring holding that swivel, so we've got a bit of tension there in the rig body. Oh, there we go. A little bit of tensioning. And on here today, I've got a size two saltwater super match with the usual sequin and little bead bait stop held in place by a rig gum stop. And at the bottom end, the other snood there with an imp and going down to the cascade swivel i've actually missed off my little mini clip of this one i'm not sure why i've done that i really do prefer using a little mini clip there so i can unclip that bit of snood line if i need to like you'll have seen in my previous videos and the usual sequin and bead bait stop so i'm going to load some of the frozen lug onto here i've to topped and tailed the lug slid two of them up onto the bait needle now, because these are frozen worm, we're definitely going to need bait elastic. So I'm going to whip these on. So make sure we hold them nicely in place. Just snap that off. That's the first one. And the second one. Nice bit of elastic on there. I'm just looking down at the sea. There's definitely a lot of rot at the edge. I'll give you a little look at that in a moment and when I've got this baited up. we we'll swing the camera around. And you can see the scum line that is forming along the edge. It actually looks not too bad further out, so there is hope. Anyway, we've got these bait elastic worms on. We're going to slide a whole one onto each. Yeah, the stop knot is in a good position for the bait stop there. And also the bottom hook, get the bait on that. Slide that over the eye. So that bait stop needs to move a little bit so it holds the worm in place. I'll just slide that down an inch. There we go. So that's baited up. Good to go. I'll give my hands a quick wipe and then I'll spin the camera around so you can see the may rot we've got at the edge. So I'll just spin you around. You can probably see that there is a slick for about the first 
maybe the first 15 feet, there's a nasty slick of may rot in the water. It looks a bit like sewage, but it's definitely may rot. So that's what we're fighting against today. But we're out fishing, we're in with a chance. So it's time to get my loop rig whacked out. This is on my lovely competition performance two-piece rod, paired up with the Banzai Mono Mag today. So I'm just gonna check the mags on this, get them right where I like them before I cast it. There we go. Get my drop length better. It's a little bit too long. And we're good to go. So it's been my first cast. I'm not gonna whack it too far. Just sort of mid-range distance on this cast. And Let's see if there's anything out there. There we go, the baits are in the water. We've got about two hours till high tide. Let's see how we get on. So we've got the first baits in the water. Let's take a look at my second rig choice for the day. This is also a loop rig, slightly shorter snoods, also with size two hooks. This one's got uh, 12 inch snoods. So not much difference in it. I'm not expecting that to make any difference to our catch rate. But this is also gonna go out with those frozen lug on. I might even stick a crab on the bottom hook actually on this cast just to mix it up a bit. And I'll have a five ounce grip to go on the bottom again. So I'll get this one baited up chuck it out on the second rod and then we'll go through my third rig choice for the day uh, which is different to these it's not a loop rig the first thing to do is get these baits on there so i'm going to get my frozen worm it's rapidly defrosted chop the ends slide it up the bait needle it's actually a lot warmer down here than i thought it was going to be the weather forecast was for cloudy and rain, but it's actually pretty sunny. And I get the next worm, top and tail. Slide this onto the bait and needle as well. So that's our two frozen lug on the bait needle. Get the bait elastic, give them a good whip. These ones have gone a little bit squidgy now they're out the freezer. There we go, one elastic on. Get the other one sorted. Give that a good whip. There we go. Good to go. So I finished getting this rig baited up. Same routine as usual. Not sure I mentioned it's size two hooks again on this rig. So really isn't very much difference at all from the other one I'm using. The bait stop in the right place. Now this one I have remembered to put my little mini snood clip on, so that's good. So if we do unhook any flatties, sorry, if we do catch any flatties and need to unhook them through the gills, we're in a better position with this rig. So there we go, I'll get this chucked out on the second rod. So we've got our second loop rig here, good to go. All clipped up, ready. Also, this is on my other competition performance two-piece rod, paired up with my Daiwa 7HT, the one I serviced about a week ago. Sadly, I lost my bearing pin removal tool. So my other reels haven't had the same TLC yet. I'm just waiting for a new one to be delivered. Check the mags, I've got a... The wind is coming this way along the beach, straight down the beach that way. So I don't want my mags too loose today. I haven't got the wind on my back like I've had down Seaford. Sorry, down Seaford, down Shoreham. It's definitely a very side-on wind today. There we go, a little flip, just to get the baits out. Probably out about 80 yards. Let's see if we can pick up a fish on this rig as well. Be nice to have one on each, wouldn't it? Oh, who am I kidding? Anyway, we'll see how we do. Well, we've got both rods out in the water now. 
time to take a look at rig number three. Now you'll have seen this rig, well not literally this rig, the same design of rig. In my last video when I was out fishing for flounders, this is a good rig for flounders. And I'm going to pair it with a five ounce hybrid lead from Shorecast. I'm just going to stick the lead on the end and then we'll take a look at the rig. So I just pop that on the clip at the bottom. So this is a Wessex style rig and you can see the weight freely slides along the rig body and I've got a snood at the top that is about 20, 20 inches long. Uh, that's got, I think it's a size 2 hook, is it? Size 4 hook. Size 4 saltwater super match. No bait stop because it's not a clip down rig. And at the bottom end, it's a 23 inch snood also with a size 4 saltwater super match. And you'll notice in the middle of the rig here, if I just hold this up, the it's not a pulley bead I'm using. This is actually, it's very similar to a pulley bead. It's like a mini pulley bead if you like. I think it's called a running bead and you get them from Tronics Pro. It's a little bit more subtle on a rig like this than a great big pulley. So we're not going to be launching this any big distances. We just want a little stealthy rig that might attract us a flatty. And again, we've got the beads either side of that to protect the knots as it slides up and down. So that's this rig. And we're not going to be chucking this out very far. We're going to be maybe fishing it at 40, 50 yards. See if there's any flatties close in that fancy a frozen lug or a bit of crab. I think I might have said I was going to put crab on one of those other rigs and didn't do it. So I'll stick a bit of crab on this one. Now before I do do my baiting up, I just wanted to say something about my two loop rigs I'm using today. Both of them have got short-ish snoods, uh, 16 inches and 12 inches. And I'm sticking to the shorter snoods today because we've got smallish tides and I prefer fishing a shorter snood in a small tide. Now, it's still always good to experiment. I'm not doing that today because it's just a little short trip that was last minute. But experiment with different snood lengths, see what's working well on the day. But generally I've found smaller tides, shorter snoods. So there's a little tip for you. At least that's what works for me. See if it works for you. So I've got the black lug stuck on the top hook of that flounder rig. And I'm just gonna stick one of these little crabs on the bottom hook, so I'll peel most of the shell off, I'm not too worried about getting all of it off. I'm going to snip the crab three quarters of the way down the middle, get the baiting needle, and what we're going to do is open the crab up, so the top there's half here and a half here, so look, I've just unfolded it if you like. Get the bait needle, slide that vertically down, And then we're going to get the bait elastic and give this a good whip. Oops, get hold of the end. I'll be whipping it quite tightly. This is going on a size four hook, remember, and we need to make sure. Oops, a few legs falling off, not worried about that. Need to make sure enough of the hook points exposed. Oh, lovely, I got all that down my trousers. Then we get our bottom hook and we're going to take that crab and gently slide it around the hook making sure we keep that line nice and tight because it's not as easy doing this with a crab as it is with a worm. We want to make sure it goes on nicely. There we go. And if I take that out, you can see there, hopefully, plenty of the hook point still showing. I'll get this hung up on my tripod, ready for when we reel the first one in. Well, the first one I cast out has been out there a while. The rod tip has been doing that a little bit, which I'm not sure is a good sign. It could mean there's a bit of rot on the line, but let's reel it in, take a look see what the baits are like and then I'll get my rig with the plane lead chucked out oh we got tied wow it's gone right down to the left considering it's a small tide today I'm actually surprised how much that swung around it's 
especially as it wasn't chucked out that far. Yeah, absolutely a load of rot on the line. Loads of rot. Oh, quite a lot of that's come off, but it's globby horrible stuff. Spraying on me out the reel. That'll be over soon. Maybe a few weeks more of this. How were the baits looking? Let's see. Ah, well, one of the bottom hook is untouched. Something might have had a go at the one on the top. There we go. Anyway, I've changed rigs. Get the other one chucked out about 50 yards. So there we go, good to go. Now I'm going to cast this to my left over my other line but I'm not going to pop it very far. Ugh, no rot. There we go. Yes, yeah, so that went about 40, 45 yards maybe. Nice and close in. Do a bit of scratching. Mix up the tactics. See if we can pick up that fish. Well, I reckon it's time to take a look at the second rod. See if we've got just as much may rot on this as the first one. You know, on the plus side, I got both my hooks back on that first winding. That is definitely an improvement over Shoreham. Well, I lost 10 hooks on my last session. That's a lot of hooks to lose to a few pesky spider crabs. Oh, I've got a right glob on the top of that, the top eye. Take a look at that. Whoa, globby, globby. Hopefully the leader knot will still run through that glob at the top eye. Yeah, there we go. Check the baits. Well, well, well. Bait on the top hook, and what about my bottom hook? Oh, I spoke too soon. I spoke too soon. No hook. Sad times. Well, there's life in the sea. I suppose that's something to be thankful for. <laughs> Let's get these baits whacked out. Always check the line is not twisted around the top eye. And we're good to go. We're out and we're fishing. Well, I reckon it's time to take a look, see if we've got anything on the flounder rig. It's been nodding away like there's plenty of may rot on the line again. Uh, we shall see. That has drifted around a bit. I can't remember I cast it that way. And it is now dead straight in front of me. So it has moved someone, has swung around. God, I can't get my words out today. I think I need a cup of tea. They've got quite a breeze picked up today. It was an absolutely gorgeous weekend, the weekend just gone. And today it's clouded over and there's a lot of rain forecast for the week. So I've come out today expecting a bit of rain, but it's actually nice enough not to even have my jumper on, especially when I'm sat inside the snug there. Well, what do we have? We have, it looks like we've still got two hooks, which is a bonus. And the baits on that, absolutely untouched. That's the lug at the top and the crab at the bottom. Anyway, I'll get my now repaired loop rig that's got a new hook stuck on it, whacked out on this, rebate this rig, and we'll keep on repeating the cycle. 
Well, the band of May Rock, uh, when I started, I said I think it was about 15 feet wide, I think I said. It's now more like 25 yards from me to where the really thick slick appears out there. Um, as the tide's come up, it seems like the May Rock band has expanded. But anyway, we'll keep on fishing through it. But when I reeled in the flounder rig just now, it wasn't actually too bad on the line. So maybe the close in casts are not going to pick up too much. And also, hadn't been spider crabbed. Anyway, let's get this loop rig chucked out. Two frozen lug again on this. There we go. Baits are in the water. Let's see what we can get. Well, my lines are really being pulled around by that tide. Combined with the rock, I'm now fishing in New Haven. Literally, my line is now that way. It's not even been out particularly long. Oh, there's a lot of rot. There really is a lot of rot on that line. I don't know if you couldn't see the bend in that tip. There's me thinking it wasn't as bad here as down Shoreham. How wrong was I to judge so quickly? Oh, we're nearly in. The moment of truth isn't too far away. You know what, it still feels heavy even though I'm right at the edge. Woohoo! We have a fish! This might be why I was halfway down the beach, as well as the rot on the tide. There we go, two fish, it's a double shot, look at that. A bit reminiscent of my last trip in a way. We have... Doggy, doggy, doggy. And a dab, dab, dab. So I'll get these guys unhooked and chuck them back. We're not blanking, so that's brilliant. That's better than I'd hoped for today. A couple of fish. There we go. Well, there we have our little dab. Nicely lip hooked, so the hook comes straight out, coming in at 23 centimetres. I'll pop him back in a second. I can mind my box for a minute. And here, we have the doggy. Look at that, wild one. It's trying to bite me. So we're getting both chucked back. There we go. Double shot and we're off to a start. Well, this one's also down near New Haven. So let's see what we've got this time. Let's get this reeled in and see if we've got anything on there. Apart from the dreaded rot. Look at that. Globby, globby, globby. Isn't it delightful? What a wonderful hobby fishing is. And what do we have on here? Well, nothing this time, but we've got both the hooks and the bait back. That's a good sign in my book. Spider crabs haven't been stealing my hooks this time. Time to get some more baits worked out. Well, just take a look in the bend in that tip. That is rot mostly, but also a bit of tide pull. So it's time to reel this in, cast it in a little bit closer and see if we can uh, get fishing a little bit better than that. So I'm going to get this reeled in. My line is whistling under the tension on it. This is where I'm glad I'm using 20 pound line. Crikey. And I've just spotted a massive piece of wood floating in front of me. And some nice big nails coming out of it. So I'll have to watch that when I get near the edge.
I tell you what, this is virgin on unfishable. Certainly at the distance I am out. But it's not even budging. Crikey. Well, I think I may well be well and truly snagged here. So to get out of the snag, what I'm going to do is put my thumb over the spool, walk up the shingle. So I'm just going to spin the camera around. You can see what I'm doing. So let's see if I can pop out of this snag. So thumb on the spool and I'm just going to hold the rod straight and walk up the beach. Well, I got that out the snag. At least it moved a little bit. Yeah, it's moving. That was pretty close to a, a snap line, but we're free of whatever it was. And it is now coming in. We're near the edge and we've still got a bit of weight on here. I'm wondering if I'm pulling something in, possibly my other line. <laughs> well, there's the leader knot on the reel. What have we got on the end? Yeah, I've got my other line. So I'm just going to go and sort that out and then get some more bait chucked out in the water. At least we've got my rig back. Well, it is now high tide, which means time for a cup of tea. So it's been pretty hard going. I'll just get my tea bag out. Oop. It's been pretty hard going today. A lot of may rot in the water still. Tide pull, snags, spider crab took my hook. But we did have a double shot so far of that doggy and the dab, which may have saved the day. So I've been fishing for nearly two hours, I think. Um, and I'm going to give it at least another hour, maybe another hour after that, but I would like to get home before rush hour. It's now half three. So we'll see how I'm feeling, see how the fishing goes. If the rock clears up a bit, then I'm more likely to stay a while. Well, that really is high tide. It's uh, getting a little bit close to me here, but I think I'm going to be all right. Probably be a big wave now come up and swipe me away. But anyway, I'm just going to keep fishing, keep trying, see if we can get out another flatty because I do like my flatties. And hopefully we won't see any more signs of those spider crabs. It's just the one hook loss so far, which is a lot better than my last session when I was down shore. Cheers. Well, guys, it's absolutely glorious down here, apart from the breeze. It was supposed to be raining. What do the weather people know? But anyway, let's take a look, see if we've got anything on the flounder rig. I'll just pick this up. There's a lot of rock in front, as I've said a few times. And this has swung around a lot. With all the rot on the line, it's very hard to tell if there's any weight of a fish on here. Look at that. Globby, globby, globby. How's the end looking? No fish, but again, we've got both the hooks back, but the crab and the lug are untouched. There we go. Nothing shown any interest in those baits whatsoever. So I'm going to switch this rig over, chuck a loop rig out instead. So we've got the usual pattern for today. Two frozen lug on the loop rig. This is the one I had to repair because the spider crab style the hook. Anyway, let's get these baits chucked out. I'm not going for massive distance because there's so much rot out there. That's picking up on the line. So I'm going to go for, I don't know, maybe 80 yards. So given that, I'm just going to put the ledge almost straight back behind me. That's at about two o'clock. Straight back's 12, two o'clock is roughly where my lead is. Little gentle flick. Splosh. Maybe that's where the fish will be. Soon enough we'll see. Let's see if we've got anything on my loop rig that has made its way down to New Haven. At one point it did look like I had a couple of taps on it so we shall see oh 
No, nothing. Something's had a month on that top hook though. Let's take a look at those baits and you can see what I mean. So we've got the bottom hook there. Clearly nothing's touched that. Or does it look like something had a good suck on the top one? Look, a completely different looking bait. That's a sign of some action on there. Probably a flatty having a suck on that worm. It's lost all its colour. It's no longer nicely on the hook. Something's had a right good suck on that. So maybe those plucks I thought I saw, sorry. Maybe those plucks I thought I saw were indeed a fish. Anyway, time to switch this rig over, chuck the flounder rig back out. Well, folks, we've come to the end of our session down Seaford Beach. And what can I say? We've had rot, we've had spider crab action, we've had a dog, we've had a dab. Considering this was a last minute session where all I had was a bit of frozen bait, I came down honestly with low expectations because we've got a wicked easterly breeze coming down the beach as well. And based on past experience, I know Seaford doesn't always fish very well in an easterly. The fact I've caught a couple of fish, had a nice day out and it hasn't rained, even though it's forecast to do so. I've been sitting here in my t-shirt without a jumper or anything extra on, cooking in the sun. What more could you want? It certainly beats sitting at home. Anyway, if you've liked this video, please do click the like button and I would absolutely love it if you could subscribe to my channel. It helps me out and it costs you nothing. Anyway, until next time, this is it for today. Thanks for watching.